Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I have another inspiration video for you. Alright, before we get started though, I want to apologize that I've not yet announced the winner for the hashtag WFH module so along, the work from home module so along. Um, Instagram is uh, temporarily not posting all um, recent posts to hashtags because of the election. Um, I guess propaganda and all that kind of stuff going out. So um, I I am seeing some posts, I mean quite a few posts actually, on the hashtag, but I'm not 100% sure I'm seeing all of them. And I just want to make sure everyone that had entered by the deadline, because um, I'll be able to see, they're all time stamped, I can see which ones were posted on um, uh, Halloween and which ones, you know, weren't or whatever, uh, or posted by Halloween the 31st. Anyway, I just want to make sure I get everyone. So I'm going to wait after the election is today as you're watching this. So I will um, randomly select the winner on Wednesday and then make that announcement on Wednesday. So um, stay tuned for that. Um, that video will probably come out um, probably Thursday morning. I'll just come on real quick Thursday morning. Um, and just announce who won, but I'll put it on Instagram on Wednesday. So if you, you know, want to check into my Instagram on the grid or on stories or whatever, I will post it there. Um, if you are the winner, I'll get in touch with you um, uh, in your Instagram account. But yes, I will make an announcement as well. I don't know if it'll be in the video. I may wait and just put it in Friday's video because then I won't have to upload another video. So yeah, I'll announce it on the channel on Friday. But yes, everything will happen on Instagram on Wednesday. Um, but if you don't catch it on then, I will... Um, also announce it for the video on Friday. Okay, so again, I apologize for that. That was an um, a, an unanticipated uh, hitch in the plan. So I just really wanted to make sure everyone got included. So I apologize that we've had to postpone that, but rest assured, we will be announcing that this week as soon as hashtags get all back to normal again on Wednesday. All right, so for today, I thought it would be fun. Um, one of my absolute favorite things in the world to sew are coats and jackets. I love making coats and jackets. Um, I mean, how many does one person need? Apparently a lot. <laughs> That's just one area I'm not gonna limit myself. I just love wearing coats and jackets. I love making them. Um, I think that they can just completely change an outfit. Um, I think I've said on the channel before, uh, my grandfather, um, on my, my paternal grandfather, um, was a clothes horse and he had five granddaughters and he loved taking us shopping. And I remember once he told me um, he wanted to buy me, he loved to shop, uh, loved to buy his clothes and that kind of thing. And he told me once that um, I had said, you know, oh, like I already have a jacket, you know, I already have a winter coat or whatever. And um, he told me that someone can never have too many coats because often that is all someone sees you in. <laughs> so I've taken that to heart. I don't know that that's accurate, Grandpa Jack, but I've taken that to heart. <laughs> um, okay, my battery's getting ready to die. I should have checked that before I started, so let me uh, switch that over real quick and then we'll delve in. So anyway, sorry about that. On that note, um, I thought it would be kind of fun to do a um, post on 10 on-trend coats for this fall and winter, mostly winter, um, but yeah, fall and winter, because I am going to do some lighter weight ones on here as well, and then the patterns you can use to recreate them, because I love looking for those kind of patterns. I love making them. I've actually came across a somewhat new to me. I'd heard of them before, but never really looked at their stock, um, but yeah, somewhat new to me company that I'm excited to try out quite a, like a lot of their patterns <laughs> um, that I'm excited to kind of talk to you guys about as well just because it's something new that I've discovered again they've been around for quite a while but it's just I've just never sewn anything from them and um, was kind of reminded of them again recently all right, so I've got 10 jackets and coats here. We'll go through the inspiration post. As always, the inspiration post um, can be, I have a link down to my Pinterest board down below, so you can go back to the original source for all of these inspiration posts. I have pulled all these inspiration posts off of um, store websites, so these are all currently for sale. So um, yeah, definitely something that you can um, order if you really wanted to. <laughs> okay, also, there are a ton of patterns that can probably be used to make any of these patterns. I just kind of, I picked one just um, for ease, basically. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm sure that there are quite a few more that you could use to hack these ready-to-wear coats um, and you know make them your own. So definitely, if you have one in your stash already, you don't have to go out and buy all of these. But this is just, and actually, I even have um, one on here that could be used for a couple of different ones. But I do have a different pattern for each. Um, inspiration picture. All right. 
that's enough of the disclaimers. <laughs> Let's get into it. All right, here is the first one. All right, so this is, I think this is from J. Crew. I hit the jackpot. I, there was a ton of stuff that I pinned from J. Crew. They had just had a lot of, coat wise, had a lot of really good stuff this season. Um, and I think this one was. I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on that. You can again find it on the Pinterest board. I'll have it linked. But what I loved about this, and I've actually saw this a lot as I was doing my online shopping, um, but number one, I saw a lot of contrasting collars and a lot of use of faux Sherpa, um, sh like in not, a, not only in contrasting pieces, but all over. Um, faux fur was big, and then faux and real leather um, seems to be very big this uh, season as well. So I did, I've pulled a little bit from all of those. Um, but yes, having the contrasting collars was, I saw in a ton of different shops. Um, so it seems to be something rather big. Now, of course, this is just your basic jean jacket, but what they've done is they've lined the body of it and the collar with the faux Sherpa. And then if you look at the second picture, it looks like the sleeves have been like underlined probably with a, um, just like a, a lining fabric. So um, my guess is because if you look at the the nature of a jean jacket cuff is that it has like a vent basically kind of like um, a not a placket it's a vent um, for the the cuff to close. So you have to be able to and most of the time they aren't um, lined. So you can line these jackets um, you just sometimes have to do a little flinagling when you get around um, the sleeve and cuff area. However, um, I have actually done this before. I used a different pattern than the one that I'm um, telling you just because this pattern I'm going to be telling you in a second didn't exist yet. <laughs> but I did. It was a boxier um, style. I ended up giving it away. Number one, I, I made it corduroy. It was a corduroy jean jacket and I did the Sherpa on the inside. Um, it was from my mentor stash. Um, this has been quite a few years ago and it was really old corduroy and when I um, had it cleaned, I got a whole bunch of holes all of a sudden appeared in the corduroy where it had just been probably eaten by bugs is my guess. It was a cotton corduroy. Um, so anyway, I ended up actually just donating that. Um, I wasn't aware of the, um, that's why you should always, you know, pre-wash your fabric, but it was a coat. And so I didn't think, you know, I thought it already been washed. Anyway, long story short, <laughs> but I had done that. I just lined the body. Um, and then, you know, one of the the top part of the collar in the Sherpa and then um, I did this I just I don't think I lined the sleeves at all I think I left the sleeves as is and then just surged around the inside of the arm's eye for um, the Sherpa to the the regular part of the sleeve to close that up um, and it turned out really cute so the pattern that I've pulled for this is the um, Atina's jacket uh, from Itch to Stitch. I've made this one before. Now the reason I picked this one, there are a ton of different jean jacket patterns out there. The reason I like this one so much is because she does have cup sizes. And as you all know, Itch to Stitch patterns just fit me really, really well. A size eight, and then if I need a cup size with a D cup is, it just fits me to a T. Um, and again, I've made this jacket before. I made it out of recycled men's jeans. Um, I would love to make a more standard one at some point, just like in a dark denim that may be in the spring, but I think doing one with the Sherpa on the inside would be fantastic, especially if you live in an area that doesn't get super cold. If you need something somewhat warm, but you don't need it, um, you don't need like the full down <laughs> quilted puffer jacket. Um, like you do here in Indiana, but there are some areas where you can get away with just probably a jean jacket that's got some Sherpa in there and you'll be good to go. So that was coat or jacket one. The second one I came across also probably for either the transitional times or if you do live in a little bit warmer climate where you don't really need a winter coat. I saw a ton of things for um, quilted vests. Now obviously um, there is a, um, well it's been quilted, so there's a layer in between um, the outside and the inside fabric here, but uh, I think that that would be pretty easy, number one, to do. Um, you could just do very simple quilting if you wanted, or I have seen places, um, and it would definitely be worth a Google search, to buy quilted um, coating fabric, because I know that I have seen it before. Um, and maybe any of the like outdoor places, maybe, I know some of you have, I can't even think any off the top of my head, that's awful. <laughs> Um, but any of the uh, more technical fabrics and stuff like that, um, especially as we're coming into the colder months here in the Northern Hemisphere, might have some of these pre-quilted um, fabrics. And so that would make a fantastic vest. And for the uh, pattern for this, it's another itch to, stitch, itch to stitch pattern. And it's the, I'm not gonna pronounce it right. <laughs> um, in, 
Invig... Mm, I'm just going to put it right here. Invig... Invigdo? Invigdigo? Nope, nope, that's not right. <laughs> Someone's going to correct me. They're going to be like, that's where I live! Because she names all of her um, patterns after places. So I'm sure I just don't want to butcher this place um, because I'm sure, I mean, someone lives there. So uh, I just, I, I, yes. But this vest, <laughs> which I have seen quite a few people make up and it, it looks so flattering on everyone. This is not a um, lined vest, but it does have an option for a hood with or without a hood. Uh, and I think to be more like the inspiration post, if you wanted to, you could just omit the um, channeling for the, uh, around the waist and have a little bit more boxier uh, finish if you wanted to. Uh, but I think that this one goes really well with the Inspiration Post because it's got all of the pockets, um, it's got the um, overlap and all the, the the snaps and all of the bells and whistles that makes it a little bit more of a um, technical functional vest, um, as well as something that's very, very cute. And because she's used princess seams in this pattern, I think even if you did omit that um, casing around the waist, if you just didn't want that for the look. I think you would still get a lot of really nice shaping um, just because of the nature of those uh, princess seams and she's pretty good about putting shaping into all of her patterns. So definitely um, have a look at that. I really want to make that. Again, I've seen a couple of people made that actually for the work from home module sew along as their topper and I, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to that's, it's definitely hopped onto my radar. It's a little bit older pattern for itch to stitch, but it's definitely back on my radar. <laughs> Uh, I think that was a J. Crew um, jacket as well. Again, there's a, quite a few J. Crew on here. All right, number three is this wool coat with this wonderful fur trimmed hood. I again, I saw a lot of things that either had the faux fur, faux sherpa, uh, faux leather, but a lot that incorporated that. And I think that I mean, is there anything more snuggly than having a um, fur trimmed hood on your coat? <laughs> I, don't, I think not. <laughs> anyway, this was also J. Crew, and um, I mean, any nice wool coating uh, would be perfect for this. You wouldn't even need to use a solid if you didn't want to. You could definitely use a plaid if you wanted or something else that's printed. Um, I would stick to the heavier weight wool coatings on this just for the structure. Uh, so anything that's a melton, and it doesn't, it could be a wool blend very easily, but anything that is, um, calls itself a melton would be beautiful. Um, I mean, it really any wool coating, the heavier weight wool coatings would be great. And this is one of the patterns from the uh, New To Me. Again, they've been around for a long time. Um, and I say New To Me. I just have never made anything from them. Um, and I, my interest has been peaked recently. <laughs> and I am waiting, I think, if they've got any kind of Black Friday sales. I think that I may buy a few of their coat patterns. They've got some beautiful ones. But it's Waffle Patterns is the name of the company. Um, they've just got some gorgeous coats. With the, I mean, her attention to detail on her patterns just appears to be beautiful. And almost an exact match on this is the Peppernoot um, jacket from Waffle Patterns. It's got the fur trimmed hood and even the pockets are very, very similar. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the pockets. Another thing that she has in her shop, and I'll link it down below, she has a um, pattern, It's I guess it's kind of a grouping of patterns, of 23 different pockets that you can put on any of her coat patterns. Um, and it's got the instructions, the pattern pieces you need, everything, uh, where you could really make any of her patterns or any pattern period your own with a whole bunch of different pocket options. I mean, it, t it, it looks really cool. So if nothing else, just go look at what it's 23 different pop pocket options. It's really, really beautiful. Um, but the pockets on this Pepper Newt are almost identical to the pockets that are on this J. Crew jacket. They're kind of like um, oblong, a list a little bit, and have like the zipper. Um, I mean, they're a really cool pocket. <laughs> so I thought that this coat really hit the hit the nail on the head. Now I think that the Waffle Pattern Company, um, or the Waffle, Waffle Pattern Coat, the Pepper Newt, looks like it might have a little bit more shaping through the waist um, than the J. Crew jacket does. The J. Crew coat looks like it's just a little bit boxier, but in all honesty, I would prefer a little bit more shaping in my, ca my jacket or my coat. Um, so I think that it might be even better <laughs> than the original one on that one. All right, next up is this cocoon coat, also from J. Crew. Of course, I was drawn to the color. Um, if I could find some uh, orange, bright orange wool coating, oh my gosh, I would remake this jacket in a heartbeat. If anyone sees any bright orange <laughs> um, wool anywhere, get give me a ring, <laughs> send me a message, because <laughs> um, I would love to recreate this coat. Now, the one, again, with the Waffle Pattern Company, um, I went with the bamboo coat. Now, you look at the bamboo coat, and you're like, well, that looks nothing like that coat. <laughs> and actually, Waffle Patterns does have a cocoon coat. It's like a raglan-style kind of cocoonish coat. But 
when you use the add-on pack for this jacket, which puts in a zipper and it gives it a collar, like a stand-up collar instead, um, and I think it's only like $2 or something for the add-on pattern, you get this coat, which looks a lot like the Inspiration coat. So I think that, number one, the bamboo coat is a very classic, um, real loose, straight-lined, minimalist type coat that could go, I mean, you could put it in different fabrics and it would be a classic coat you would wear forever and ever. Um, but I do love the add-on with the um, zip up and the, the high collar. It, it really looks exactly like this J. Crew coat. Um, and again, you could use their pocket pattern for and make any pockets that you want. <laughs> you could do as many of the flap welt pockets that you wanted to on that coat. Um, I'm sure with the pattern that is there, uh, if you were interested in that as well. Um, a lined coat, it just looks really beautiful. I'm just very interested in this pattern company. Uh, so on that, I'm gonna cartwheel off of that, and here is another J. Crew coat that I grabbed, which I love. You know, it's very uh, buttoned down, it's got the cute little collar, it's in a bottle green here, hopefully you can see it, um, with buttons all the way down the front. Now, you could definitely use, um, honestly, the bamboo coat that I showed you in the previous could be used for quite a, like, uh, this, this coat, and it could also be used for another one that I'm gonna show you, um, but I thought that this coat was a dead ringer for Butterick, oh my gosh, I can't remember the number. It's a Lisette pattern. I had them all down here in my lap. 6385. <laughs> Sorry, Butterick 6385. Now this is a Lisette pattern for Butterick and it comes in cup sizes. I'm almost positive it comes with cup sizes because I, I own it, <laughs> but um, I'm pretty sure. But this is a dead ringer for this J. Crew jacket. I mean, literally you could buy a bottle green wool and uh, make this coat verbatim and it would be uh, pretty much a dead ringer. Um, it's right on. And actually, this pattern is one that I'm thinking of doing. Um, I've had a lot of requests for doing a coat sew along. Um, so once the jean sew along is finished, I think that I might look into doing possibly this coat just because it has the cup sizes and that makes fitting a coat so much easier because you can fit, especially since it's a tailored coat, you can fit it to your shoulders and then be good with the bust. Um, that's just an area that I really struggle with. So <laughs> I'm always really keen on anything that is the uh, bust cut patterns. So uh, yeah, I thought that those were very close um, and very similar. And the butter pattern is a lined pattern. All right, next up. So this is, I think this is also a J. Crew coat. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Again, I hit the jackpot with J. Crew. There was, I was like, oh my gosh, I want a lot of these. Now this is a little bit military-esque. Um, I love, I don't know that I would make this for myself just because it has so many pockets that can become very overwhelming on my bust line. However, I think it is gorgeous. I love the belt. I love all of the structured pockets. Again, the military flare. It is just really spot, the nice collar. It is spot on for, um, on trend because there's a ton of military inspired um, and equestrian as well um, for the season that has been brought up by many stylists that, <laughs> that I follow. Um, I'm not really in the know, I just follow people that are. Um, but anyway, this was another dead ringer for um, this waffle pattern, okay, I can't remember. I, this is another one I think I'm gonna butcher. It is the um, Yomagi, um, I think it, they, she calls it the shirt jacket. Now, it's like a dead ringer, like with all of the big buttons, the pockets. Now the Yomagi is a little shorter than the J. Crew coat. I mean, but that would be a very easy thing just to lengthen that. Um, if you wanted to hit it, you know, a little bit lower, like a little closer to like right above the knee, which is what it looks like it's hitting this model, a little bit above the knee. But it does look longer than the, um, than the waffle pattern um, coat. Now, the waffle pattern coat, the orange one that you're seeing here is not lined, but there are instructions and lining pieces to line that coat. So if you go on to, if you click on the link, and I do not have an affiliate, this is just me finding this pattern company <laughs> and wanting to make a lot of their patterns. Again, I probably won't make this one just because it is a lot for my bust, but if you are someone that can wear a lot of pockets on your bust, oh my gosh, please make this, and I wanna see pictures. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you scroll through the pictures that are on that pattern, she's made it up in a wool and it has lined it. So you could very easily hit this uh, J. Crew inspiration very easily, um, like a dead ringer. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, I just saw it. I was like, oh my gosh, they're so close. So that was another fun one that um, I came across. 
All right, now we're gonna move into, well, I guess we still have one more that's kind of tailored. But the next jacket that I came across, this is anthropology, I think. Um, but again, faux Sherpa was very much in. This is kind of a faux Sherpa uh, bomber jacket, but how warm and cozy would this be? Um, it's got the little, uh, does it have the patch pockets? I looked at quite a few different ones. Yeah, it's got the little patch pockets on the front. Um, I think they're zippered ones, but the, it's zippered up the front. It even has like the little zippered um, pocket up here. Um, so cute in the off-white, I think. I mean, this, this girl's rocking it here in this picture. But this was a very similar one to um, a, a Mimi G pattern that's been out a little bit. The pockets are different, but I mean, again, you could do the pockets as is or you can mix them up, but it's even in the same like colored fabric. But it's this Bomber Jacket Simplicity 8994. Um, again, this came out, I think, last fall, but it is, it is spot on for that jacket, that anthropology jacket, the zipper, everything. Um, and I think that the anthropology jacket, yeah, uh, well, the anthropology jacket just has a hem, whereas the Mimi G pattern has, like, a band, like a bomber jacket, like a knit band that goes around the bottom, which is actually, I think, a little bit more comfortable. So, um, yeah, I thought that they were very, very similar, and it would be so cozy, it's making me really want a faux Sherpa jacket. And I did see, I was on Joanne's website um, trying to find the faux pleather that I bought, uh, which by the way, it is not available online um, and it really only, it shows up, but it will only show up yardage if you have a store near you where you could do a pickup. Um, and I think, um, I know one person that was able to find some by doing that to do a pickup um, near her but I can't find it anymore. So um, it is, and we'll talk a little bit more about it, but the Ember collection, I think, is what it was from. Um, and it's in a, like a brick red color, and I can't remember now what the color's called. But anyway, they're faux leather. But as I was on there looking for that, um, I noticed that they had a ton of faux Sherpa. So that would definitely be worth, you know, saving your coupons, and I don't know what the quality is on it, uh, but definitely be one to look into. Um, and I think they had some, a uh, whole bunch of different faux furs as well. So definitely something to look into if that's something that you're interested in making. All right, back to tailored coat for just a minute. Um, this is a Madewell coat. I really love the fabric on this. This gigantic window pane is just gorgeous. Again, it's a very simple coat. You could once again use that bamboo coat from Waffle Patterns if you wanted, or um, I have made the By Hand London Rumana coat before. It is such a fun make. The instructions are fantastic. It's a lined coat. It is so, I, it's just a very well-fitting coat. It has beautiful back shaping. Um, it just fits me really, really well. Unfortunately, I made mine in a pale gray and I don't like it on me anymore. <laughs> so my daughter wears it um, when she needs, I mean, it's a, a long coat. Uh, I did not put a button and buttonhole on mine. I wanted it to be kept open um, because that was an inspiration picture I had seen that was very similar. Uh, but you, she does talk about how you can put, you know, there's instructions for how you can do a button and buttonhole there um, if you wanted one. Uh, I think you would need to shorten it um, which would make it even easier because you may be able to get away without even doing a um, vent or a much shorter vent. Anyway, because the Romana comes down, it's like a midi length coat, but this coat on this model is above the knee, like mid thigh. So um, yeah, you could definitely um, play around with the length, which would be very easy. It's a pretty straight from the hip down, so you could very easily um, chop it and, and bring it up. Um, but anyway, I think in a really cool windowpane plaid coating, this would be gorgeous. And again, it is a really great pattern. Um, it, yeah, it fit me really well. Um, and I don't even think I did a full bust adjustment on it, to be honest. I really don't think I did. I made it a few years ago. But um, it was, I mean, even putting in the um, lining with the vent, uh, the instructions were really good, and I didn't have any issues at all. It's a, it's a really cool coat. I still have it. My, my, again, my daughter wears it, so... Um, yeah, it's a good one. Good pattern. I need to make another one. <laughs> that might happen this winter. Um, it's a really good classic coat. All right, next up, I cannot remember where, this I think maybe was anthropology as well. I think these last two are anthropology. So number nine is this pleather trench coat. I mean, need I say more? Who doesn't want a leather trench coat or a pleather trench coat? Pleather um, would be a little bit more uh, cost effective, of course. Um, it's a lined coat. It is very, has all the details of a trench coat. Um, it just looks beautiful. And immediately I thought of this Vogue pattern. Uh, I think it's Vogue V1650. I own this one. I've not made it yet. 
this one. Now, she has it buttoned up, so it looks like a different neckline than the one in the picture, but that's a trench coat. So if you wear it open, like the gal in the um, anthropology ad, then it creates the lapel. Um, they just have this one buttoned all the way up with the flap over it. But this is a very traditional trench coat um, Vogue. Again, I think it came out last fall, I believe. Um, it's just got a lot of really cool details, the nice big belt. I really do want to make this. Um, and it's lined. So that was another big thing, because if you're making something with pleather, you obviously want a lining so that it's not sticking to your clothing, um, because that would just not work. <laughs> And a lot of trench coat patterns are unlined. So um, when I came across this one, I was like, oh my gosh, I have that pattern too. Um, I do not have enough of my pleather to um, make it. The coat is very fabric hungry. It takes almost five yards of fabric um, to make that coat. But it's gorgeous. <laughs> Uh, and I think that I would, I really do want to make that. Um, so if I can find somewhere, I just, you know, again, definitely worth Googling. Um, I know that Emma One Sock has had some beautiful uh, uh, faux leathers or pleather, faux leather sounds a little nicer, doesn't it? Uh, faux leathers in before, Minerva has carried some. So it was definitely be a um, search. And if you want to know if it's supple, because for a trench coat, I think you do want it to be a pretty supple faux leather, like not too... Um, stiff or not too thick, uh, you could definitely always request um, samples. Emma One Sock does do samples. I think Minerva does too. So definitely um, be worth it. I'm sure there's tons of other places that are selling faux leather um, right now as well. But yeah, I think that that would be so cool as a trench coat. Also, let me know if you do that. <laughs> I, I don't know that I'm going to have time to do that one. But if I, if I can figure it out, I think that would be so cool. All right, and then my last one is actually a pretty easy one. This is also from J. Crew. It's a faux cropped fur coat. Now, cropped coats, I also were all like all over the runway for the fall and winter, um, all the one runway shows and stuff like cropped blazers and all that kind of stuff, which some of that can get a little avant-garde, not something I'm going to wear every day. But, you know, a cropped faux fur jacket is very classic, something you could wear for, you know, ever and ever. And I love it in these different shades of ivory. I think it is just gorgeous how chic that that is. Um, yeah. And surprisingly, while sewing with fur can be, um, there's a few tips and a few um, precautions that need to be taken with faux fur, but typically uh, fur or faux fur, I've never sewn with real fur, but <laughs> faux fur, um, you uh, have very simple lines because, you know, you don't want a lot of seams with uh, the faux fur because they can get bulky. I mean, you have to shave depending on the pile you're using. You kind of need to shave into your seam allowances um, so that uh, things, you know, don't get too bulky and then you don't want to be able to see the seams so a lot of people will then brush it all out to pull the hair back out anyway it can be a whole thing but <laughs> it is usually a very simple silhouette to make and I also own this pattern this is um, simplicity 8741 um, it has a whole bunch of different like crop jackets but view C I believe is meant for fur and it is uh, the same thing it's the same type of collar um, the same type of front I'm not sure what the closure is on that um, it'd be easy because I think the let's see here the closure on the actual jacket well I don't see a closure so it may just be open. Um, but you could even buy the um, fur hooks. You can get those at just Joann's. They're the really big hook and eyes that then, you know, you hook and that's how it closes the jacket. So then there's no, because um, zippers can get all finicky if you're trying to, if the pile's too big, you know, you get zip up the fur and all that kind of stuff. But the fur hooks um, will close it without um, much to do. And then you just put those in by hand. So anyway, um, it would just be a very easy, um, way to do a fur coat and I, I just think it's just so so chic hmm. anyway <laughs> that one you know I've got my fur bomber but um that I actually don't wear that much it's a little too cool and I don't like it as much on my um since I've had my colors done I've gotten very finicky about and it's not that there's anything wrong with it and not that I can't wear that if I really wanted to but now I just don't grab for things that aren't in my color palette because I just like the way um I look in my color palette. So yeah, anything that's not in my color palette, I'm just not wearing because it's just not what I grab. I grab other things. Um, anyway, uh, but yes, I think that that one would be a fun one for this season as well. So there you have it, guys. That is 10 
different coats and jackets um, and patterns you can use to make them. Um, very on trend jackets for, or they're currently in the stores um, in the um, on the retail. Uh, for anyone to buy so definitely they are on trend um, and be easy to recreate if you are up for the challenge of a coat or jacket all right what was your favorite one leave it down below in the comments i would love to hear your opinion um, i hope you guys have a wonderful tuesday i will be back tomorrow for uh, the weekly vlog and then on friday i'm going to be sharing my favorite sewing books so if you are making up your own christmas list i did my favorite sewing notions gosh a couple weeks ago now um, but I'll be doing sewing books. Um, I thought it was worth separating those out because um, I have a lot of them. I love sewing books so much. I have a little bit of an addiction um, that I wanted to share with you guys on Friday. And I have a fun announcement on Friday. In addition to, I will also tell you who won the um, Sew Along Challenge um, also on Friday. But again, that'll be on Instagram on Wednesday when I've picked the winner. Randomly. Randomly picking the winner. <laughs> all right, guys, that's all I've got for now. I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday and I will see you again next time. Bye.